I don't have great Wi-Fi speeds here. Look at this. That's pretty bad by today's standards. So today I want to see if I can upgrade my Wi-Fi here and get better speeds. That's all I really want. Is that so wrong? So I got this thing, which is the brand new Asus Zen Wi-Fi BT10. This has Wi-Fi 7 in it, but it operates on three bands. Tri-band, which means three. Smart, huh? I'm often told by my wife that my dad jokes don't land and now you know why even though my macbook doesn't have wi-fi 7 in it installing this should make my wi-fi on my macbook faster anyway so let's give it a shot now wi-fi came out in 1999 that was wi-fi 1 by the way there's two different naming conventions you might see around wi-fi 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 those names come from the wi-fi alliance which certify wi-fi products but the technical boring official names are done by ieee the institute of electrical and electronics engineers i knew that so you might have seen numbers like 802.11 there's also 802.3 which is for ethernet 802.15 which is for bluetooth and there's a lot more but 802.11 is specifically for wi-fi and then it breaks down from there 802.11b which is wi-fi 1 802.11a which is wi-fi 2 802.11g that was wi-fi 3 that's when i first got my wi-fi 54 gigabit per second oh uh never mind uh, that was megabit per second Finally, in 2014, we got to Wi-Fi 5, which was 802.11ac, and that was three and a half gigabit per second. That was a huge leap. And then we get into ridiculous speeds, speeds that you can't even reach on most LANs. Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6e have a theoretical speed of 9.6 gigabit per second. And that's what this has in it. Uh, this is a M4 Max MacBook Pro, and it's got 6e in it. And obviously, I'm not taking any advantage of that speed here with my system. By the way, Wi-Fi 7 or 802.11be is supposed to go up to 46 gigabit per second, which is just nuts. And that's coming out like now. There's devices out there right now that have this. Supposedly this Razer Blade 18 has a Wi-Fi 7 chip in it. A 46 gigabit is a theoretical limit. It's probably not gonna even get close to that because with Wi-Fi, you have things to consider like uh, bandwidth, interference, walls, all that stuff is going to slow down your signal. If you're curious to check your Mac, you can go to system settings about and then all the way down to system report and then click on wi-fi under network and i don't know what's going on with my hair today i just checked and it's pretty ridiculous but we'll go with it here we go this is what i'm running as 802.11 ac which is just wi-fi 5 and that's happening because my access points only go up to wi-fi 5 support however you can see that the wi-fi card that's installed in this machine does go up all the way up to ax Stop. So there's two of them here in this box. We've got a 10 gigabit LAN, 10 gigabit WAN, and a WAN LAN 1 with USB 3. Now, I don't have 10 gigabit networking in here, but that's good to know that this will uh, future-proof me in more than one way. Here's CAT 6 cable. It's weird that they don't give me CAT, I don't know, 7 or 8. But CAT6 at short distances will go up to the required gigabit speed rated at 10 gigabit per second. That's all, it's really basic. We got two plugs, a cable, and two boxes. So this one says, very friendly. Hi, I'm main unit, start with me. Download the Asus router app for setup. This is the main unit. That means that this one is the secondary unit. We'll put you aside for now. This is where the ugliness happens. See that rat's nest? Now I'm running a Unify system at home and I've got the cloud key, which is basically controls everything. And I've got a couple of access points connected to this through PoE, power over ethernet. I'm gonna um, unplug all that stuff. Problem is I don't know what is what, but I'm gonna guess it's these guys over here. Why is that stuck in there? Good Lord. Okay, there we go. I've got a lot of free ports now. I use this mini PC as my media server and to protect my browsing, I've been using ExpressVPN. Did you know that ISPs can track every site you visit and in the US sell your data to advertisers? Yeah. 
ExpressVPN encrypts all my traffic so my ISP can't see or sell my browsing history. This matters to me especially when I'm downloading torrents on my media server. Even legal torrents can lead to throttling by ISPs. ExpressVPN hides my IP and keeps my activity private. Using it is super simple. I open the app and I click one button. It works on all devices from phones to tablets so you stay private everywhere. In my case, I use it on a virtual machine for that extra layer of security. I can always unroll to a previous snapshot if something goes wrong. Also, US users get Identity Defender with ExpressVPN, which removes data from brokers and ensures against theft. So if you're ready to take back your online privacy, find out how you can get four months free by going to expressvpn.com slash Alex Ziskit. The link will also be in the description box below. Ugh. I should have downloaded this app. <laughs> well, I still had Wi-Fi connected. Ugh. Now, just because I unplugged all my Wi-Fi doesn't mean I unplugged the Ethernet. So I still have access to the Ethernet. This is a little patch bay I made for my desk. I got HDMI, audio, USB, Ethernet. And while this is not 10 gigs, it is 2.5 gigs. So I'm gonna plug that one in and power. And our little friend glows. Now it's kind of annoying that these two look exactly the same. And I don't yet know what the difference between them is. But this one says I'm main unit. So if I take this sticker off, I'm not going to know which one is the main unit. I guess I'll just <laughs> put my own ugly sticker on it. Now it's blue. I've got the app. Let's do setup here. Zen Wi-Fi. Wow, there's a lot of different ones. There's BT10. Scan QR code. Well, that's pretty handy. Allow. And there it is. Get started. And apparently you can do everything right from here. Wi-Fi network name, AZ Wi-Fi 2 and password. Well, I can't let you see that. I'll set a temporary one. It's actually password one, but apparently that's strong enough according to these little symbols here. <laughs> Let's go. IoT network, do that later. Local login account, yes. And there it goes, setting up your network. Pretty neat app actually. It's showing me all the different stuff. Why is it not bright enough? Here we go. All the different traffic that's going on, some statistics and what devices. What, what is this? This must be my phone. Uh, oh, I'm connected to it directly. That's pretty cool. It's automatic, but we don't have any other devices connect to it. Let's connect the Mac. What do we got here? Ah, AZ Wi-Fi 2, there it is. Let's connect to it. My super secret password and join. Now it says it's supposed to be a meter apart. Um, that's not a meter, it's like half a meter, but we'll see if this works anyway. Look at that. I got a machine that popped up right there. New client, it's not identified, but we got the Mac address of it. You got a lot of control here immediately. Block, optimization, gaming, streaming. I don't know what all that stuff is, but it looks like pretty interesting control right from your phone. <gasps> oh. Okay, well the upload is not great, but the download, 882. For reference, I have gigabit ethernet, so that's pretty close to gigabit ethernet. And that's exactly what I'm testing here. Upload, I also have a gigabit upload, so not getting close with that one. But this is quite an improvement in my Wi-Fi. You know what I gotta try next, right? This Wi-Fi 7 capable machine. AZ Wi-Fi 2, connect. Wi-Fi just got better. This network uses Wi-Fi 6. Hmm, I wonder why it's not Wi-Fi 7 by default. Do a speed test here. And I don't know why I was expecting. Wow, the download speed is a little bit better, but it's pretty close within the margin error. But the upload speed is way better. And that's probably just the difference in the antennas that are used on the computer here. It is a Wi-Fi 7 capable machine after all. Now, if I test speed test externally, I'll always be limited to that one gigabit, but we're supposed to go higher than that with this new router. So let's test the Wi-Fi from a device on the Wi-Fi network to another device on the same Wi-Fi network. On my Mac, I'm gonna run the tool called iPerf3 in server mode. So that means it's gonna be listening for any connections. And on my phone, I've downloaded an app called iPerf3. I hope this will work because this is my first time trying it. I give it the IP address of the Mac and let's go. Oh, look at that. It's jumpy. It's going kind of all over the place. Let's try that again. Maybe if I move my device somewhere else, they're a little bit too close. There's a lot of antennas in this very near vicinity, but I am getting up to 1.6 gigabits per second here through Wi-Fi. I've never had such fast speeds here in my office. Because that's faster than a gigabit, I'm Pretty happy already. Here's the Razer 18 with Wi-Fi 7 chip in it and I'm not getting 
anything better. Oh, there was one little blip of two gigabit per second. That was the fastest I've seen. So maybe a little bit better, but generally about the same. The app claims that max was 1608. So pretty good gains I got here, but they gave me this other box and this is supposed to be a mesh system, which means that these two boxes can talk to each other really fast. So if you're in a house, you can put one on one side of the house, the other one on the other side of the house, and you'll have more coverage that way. And the boxes will just talk to each other wirelessly. Probably, yeah, you could wire both of them if you have ethernet run to both sides of your house. But I also wanna see how they will talk to each other, how quickly, quickly. That's a weird way to describe uh, uh, the speed test that we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna use that cable after all that they gave me and I wanna do another test. By the way, this is a little Thunderbolt to Ethernet 2.5 gigabit adapter. Really like these. I'll link to this down below if you wanna pick one up. I have a couple of these already. I'm gonna connect this to my MacBook and the Ethernet end to this one. Now, this device was automatically configured on my phone. It just detected it automatically. So now I got Zen Wi-Fi B10 and B10, two of those. So we've got this one talking to this one via Wi-Fi. Let's do another speed test here. I'm not expecting the external speed test to change. And right now I don't have any idea what this machine is talking to. Is it talking to this or that? To find that out, I'm gonna need to turn off Wi-Fi. So I've turned off Wi-Fi and I'm gonna run this test one more time. And yes, wow, okay. So, so this machine is talking only right now through its Thunderbolt port getting converted to ethernet. So that means it's hopping from this box all the way to this box and still getting these nice speeds. In fact, it's a little bit better. Why is that cool? Well, because now I can have a completely separate system with this box and with my laptop, they're not connected to ethernet at all, just to each other. But this box is talking to this box and I've temporarily hardwired this laptop to be a server. And I've set that up to see what kind of speed that hop will give us. So let's do the test. <laughs> oh, we're approaching my LAN speeds here over Wi-Fi. So over two gigabit per second, just hopping over Wi-Fi. Nice. I've more than quadrupled my speed. Of course, that comes at the inconvenience of having to be plugged into this other box. I most likely will just have the Wi-Fi devices connected directly, not through Ethernet. But it's nice to know that I can always walk up to one of these and plug in and get even faster speeds. All right, mission accomplished. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.